Hey everyone, it's Lisa and today is Thursday. Welcome back. I have been looking forward to this video ever since yesterday when I made that crazy video or the crazy intro. Just couldn't wait to explain to you why I did that because I know you were thinking, Lisa has lost her mind. What the heck? The reason I did that is yesterday when I was thinking of things I just want to talk to you guys about and things in my life that have just helped me so much and just things I want to share with you. One of those things is confidence. Having the confidence to go for the things that you want in life. We all want different things. So no matter what it is, it seems like you need some amount of confidence to break down those barriers or jump those hurdles and get to the thing that you want. So today I'm gonna to talk about how I have worked on my confidence and then later on I want to talk about how to project confidence and stuff like that but today we're going to talk about little things that I have done to really help me with public speaking, uh, getting up in front of people, um, talking to important people, breaking out of my comfort zone and that is exactly what I did yesterday with my little dancing intro. So what I did is something I have done throughout my life and I can thank my parents for some of it because when I was growing up I was shy. When I was really little I was really shy. Like I, oh my gosh, I can remember in second grade my teacher's name was Miss Foskey and she, my birthday you know was at the beginning of the school year and this was my i think my first year we had just moved and it's my first year at this school and she called me up in front of the class and was going to give me birthday licks with her paddle and i'm telling you the the combination of her calling me up there and embarrassing me and even even though it wasn't hard hitting me with a paddle was devastating and i lost it I lost it so bad they sent me to the office and my mom had to come pick me up. And then even when she came to pick me up, I was so embarrassed and insecure and afraid all the time that I didn't even want to tell her that's what it was. So that's the kind of child I was. Matter of fact, I don't know if you know this, but my real name is Melissa. But since I've been born, they've called me Lisa, just like Oh, um, like if your name is James and they call you Jim or something. It's just a nickname. Well, I was so shy that I would never tell the teacher to call me Lisa until I think it was right around middle school. So there was a whole group of people that I went to school with, like all the way up until high school that still called me Melissa. So, I mean, that's just a little bit of how shy I used to be. It took me until about... I don't know probably probably until you know fifth and sixth grade to realize that was holding me back and that wasn't really you know I I wanted more I wanted to feel like more and be more I didn't want to be that shy girl and I never really felt inferior I've never really been competitive but I just wanted to feel better about myself. I didn't like that I always felt afraid and scared. So I would do little things. I can remember you guys like it was yesterday. One thing I remember, I can remember where I was walking, where they were sitting, but we used to go to the ballpark a lot in the afternoons. My brother played baseball and my dad coached his team. And so we would all go as a family and then come home and eat dinner. And the big thing was, you know, if you were a cool girl and you were so grown, you could walk from one field up to like the snack bar and maybe walk over to the other field where your friends were or something like that. And I remember practicing when the parents, like a lot of the parents would be sitting on the bleachers and they might say, you know, hey, Lisa. And I would practice saying, hey, hey there, how are you? I would ask them because I thought that was like so mature. And I would say, hey, how are you? And you know, they would say, fine, how are you? And I would, you know, stop practice looking them in the eye 
and talking to them. And it, as I did that more and more, it became almost like a game. I would just pretend I wasn't shy. And so that really carried me through high school. In junior high, I was on student council. I was homecoming queen. In high school, I ran for homecoming. I was, I think I was the maid of honor. And that required me to do something that I did not want to do. I remember in junior high, I had to talk. I had to run for the position. I think, I can't even remember what I was. Was I the... Was I the president or the, I cannot even remember what I was, guys. It was just, we were a group. And I have to ask my mom and dad, they probably remember. But I had to campaign. I had to get in front of the school and say what I was going to do. I had to write speeches. And so I had to push myself. I had to think, this, Lisa, this is worth it to you. This is worth it to you. You want this and you are not going to let a little bit of shyness hold you back you are going to get up there and you are going to do what you have to do and that is what i would do to get what i wanted and i i slowly learned that that if you want something bad enough you will do what you have to do you will suck it up and you will do it you have to practice and you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And then after you do it, you will realize that it's not that bad and that it was worth it. Was that worth it? Hmm. Was that worth it coming over here? Yesterday, that is what that was all about. I thought, you know, I need to be an example. I don't need to sit here and talk about things. I need to experience it with you guys. I think that's the best way. So I was thinking, what can I do? I knew I was going to do the video that I did yesterday on, because it was really on my heart that I wanted to talk about John and I and what we went through to get to the house that we chose. I was thinking, well, I know I want to do that today, but I, I was feeling motivated. And that's very important too, to when you feel motivated to do something, do it. You know what I mean? Just do it when you get that. Sometimes I get so excited for a video, I can hardly stand to take the time to get ready to do it. That's kind of how it was yesterday. So when I was sitting on the back porch waiting for my City Beauty Cream, which I love. I've got it on again today underneath my makeup, but we will get into that in a little bit. I was thinking I need to do something to challenge myself. And I was thinking, well, there's nothing I can really wear because you guys have seen me wear everything. Nothing, I've gone without lashes, I've gone without makeup. I was thinking, what can I do? And so I was thinking, what is something that I always think is really brave of people to do? And I thought about dancing. Dancing has always been one of those things. I realize I can't dance. And I think a lot of that, <laughs> I think a lot of that is I don't drink. And I think when most people are, you know, out, you know, when I was in that world of people dancing around me at clubs and stuff, I wasn't drinking. So I didn't have anything breaking down my inhibitions. And then another thing is confidence. I lacked the confidence for it to be okay. I lacked the confidence that it's no big deal. That is what always held me back. I didn't want to get out there I was too aware. I didn't want to get out there and I was so worried about what somebody thought. Like, who cares if I can't dance? You know what I mean? So I thought about that and I mean the thought of it scared me. So I thought, that's what you need to do. You need to, and I remembered that the night before when I did my house hunting video, I really liked that song that I chose for the music in that video. And I thought, great, I will put that music on and I will dance to that music. And I did it. And I looked so silly. I mean, my hands out like this. It's like, I definitely took notes and that's something else. I will be better. I will, next time I danced, I would be better. And I would be less afraid. And I would probably have more fun. So that was to show you, that is something I have never done. You guys have never seen me on Instagram or anything. And it felt good. It felt good. It felt so good that I did not even, it's weird, I didn't even show it 
to John or my parents until after I posted it because I did not want to lose my nerve. I didn't want anybody to discourage me. And I wanted that challenge to go through. I had enough faith in myself that I was going to get through it no matter what. And then the outfit that I chose was a little something too. At first I was thinking, well, what do I want to wear today? And I was thinking, I loved that denim dress. I just loved it. I thought, I want to wear that before it gets cold. I mean, I like it without tights and everything. And I knew I was getting my hair done yesterday and I'm always cold in there. So I was like, great, long sleeves will be great. And then I thought, oh, do I have the nerve to wear that with boots? and let my legs that are not in the best shape, they're 50 year old legs, do I have the nerve to let them show and wear those boots in that video and all day? And I did it. And I got so many compliments on those boots. I got so many compliments on my outfit. John loved it. And it was okay. It's okay that my legs don't look like they did when I was 20 years old. It's okay, I still felt good and I did it. That is just something that will always stay with me. You guys experience that with me. So that is very much how I have learned to be confident. It is definitely something I had to learn. This is something else. My parents took a big part in that because they are so wise and they are so good about they were so good, even though they were 19 and 21 when they had me and then they had my brother three and a half years later. The whole time we were children, they were children, they were very aware that their job as parents were to make us feel loved, valued. They never, never spoke down to us. My parents would have never like called me a name or, you know, um, insulted me. Now, it doesn't mean I didn't get uh, corrected and they weren't strict, but no one ever told me I was never going to amount to anything or anything like that. So I had a very good upbringing when it came to, you know, getting me ready to go out in the world. They were very good at, you know, you need to be yourself. You need to worry about yourself. Like none of that so-and-so has so-and-so ever mattered. My dad would always say, you need to worry about yourself. And I can remember my mom telling me, you need to get over it, life isn't fair. And, you know, basically you need to be comfortable with yourself and you need to work hard, you know, all the different things, which I can go into other areas. But one big thing they did, and it would freak me out so bad back then, is they would make me do things that were scary, like play the piano. Like if, we, if they had people come over, I took piano lessons and I can always remember it would be around Christmas time and say my relatives or my parents, friends, anybody, when they would come over, my dad would say, Lisa, play the piano for them. And I mean, I would be mortified, mortified because I guess I just wasn't that confident in my piano skills, you know? And so I would get up there and my dad's favorite song was Silent Night. So I would play Silent Night and they would all love it and I would feel so good and I would feel like, oh, I had my parents' approval and I did it. You know, it was so scary, but I did it. And even on recital, you know, when we would have the piano recital, I would be so nervous. But I wanted to do that. I am an achiever and I like to, I have always liked to challenge myself, push myself out of the comfort zone and achieve it and then that propels you to go on to something else you know there could be other things that are keeping holding you back like would i have felt as good dancing if i had not just lost weight and if i felt bad and you know my stomach was killing me probably not so there are things that you might have to deal with and like, like I told you, I had to decide that I was not going to be in pain and be swollen and bloated and overweight and unhealthy. I had to decide if it takes how many, however many years it takes, you are going to get, you are going to feel better. 
And I kept on trying, and I kept on trying, trying to discover what was making me feel bad. And then when I found out what it is, I kept on trying. I took the medicine. I did all the FODMAP. And I persevered until I realized what it was making me feel bad. Now, when it came to losing weight, that was keeping me from feeling confident, and it was keeping me from talking to you guys like I wanted to. It was keeping me from making the videos that I wanted to. It was keeping me from challenging myself. So I did not give up. I watched enough videos. I read enough books. I did what it took to lose the weight. And now I feel proud and I feel confident that I can do it. I feel confident that no matter what happens, I can handle it. And that is what I want for you. And it doesn't matter what you want. You may not want to talk on YouTube. This is crazy, I know. When I think about it, sometimes I'm like, what, what am I doing? But you may want to um, be like the PTA leader of your school. You may want to take some type of lessons or go back to school and you may be embarrassed that you are going to be the oldest one in the class. You know, there's all kinds of things that, you know, we want to do and we're just embarrassed or we're afraid of not being able to do it or we're afraid of being laughed at or we're afraid of not looking cool or not looking like we've got it together and that keeps us back. Now I've been fortunate that I had wonderful parents that just challenged me. I can remember the silliest stuff you guys. I can remember right when I got my license and I could only drive like a few places. It's not like I got my license and I could just go anywhere I wanted. I remember them sending me to go fill the gas tank for the grill and we had to go up to like a local campground and you had to call, you had to go get somebody, get them out there and get them to fill it and then bring it home. So my mom would say, she would tell me step by step what to do and what to say and I would go do it. I can remember them sending me, I feel so funny saying this, me to uh, Flip's Barbecue to go get barbecue sauce. And you know, that was that was kind of a far ways away. I don't think I had driven that far yet. And But there was no telling them no. I mean, it was not that type of parent-child relationship at my house. When your parents told you to do something, you did not even like give them a second look. You did it. And so I got in my car, went and got it, and came back. And then, you know, I had that confidence that I could drive that far. Oh, another thing was in church, my brother was the acolyte. We were raised Lutheran. So he did the, um, the lit the candles, and I was, no, he was, yeah, he was the acolyte, and I was a crucifer. I held the cross as we went down. And I don't remember, I don't remember, like, volunteering for that. I don't know if my parents signed me up or what. I don't remember that bothering me that bad, but you know, we had to do that. And then we had to sit up in front of the church the whole time. And then I remember having to read the lesson in front of the whole church, you know, ever so often. And that scared me, but I still liked it because I felt like I was doing something. I felt kind of um, accomplished when I would do that. I owe so much to them. Now, in high school, I had a boyfriend who did not nurture that confidence, and he did not talk to me that way. He talked to me very bad, and a lot of it, I don't hold it against him because it was his own insecurity, and he did not want me to feel confident. He did not want me to feel good about myself, and it really did, it broke me down a few notches, and so once I got away from that, I worked on my confidence again. So if you are with someone in your life, and I have to be careful because if you're married to someone who does that, I'm not saying leave your husband or I'm not saying, you know, do something drastic. I'm just saying if you realize it, if you really think about it and you think about what's happening, work within yourself to realize why he or she is saying that and try your best to not let it get to you and to work on yourself and realize what's happening and realize that that doesn't matter. And I kind of wanted to throw that out today, just kind of like an introduction because there's so much more I could tell you. There's confidence in getting divorced. 
there's confidence in starting your YouTube channel. There's all kinds of things I can talk about. So if you have a particular subject that you would like me to talk about, I would love to. I would love for you to feel that accomplishment because it's wonderful. Okay, first of all, I wanted to show you that this is the lip gloss that I have on my lips. It's one of those that I showed you yesterday. I think it's the very first one that I showed you, Tokyo Kiss. I started off this morning, I did like I did yesterday, I put that sculpting cream on, Woo! I love that stuff, it tightens. And I put the clear gloss on, and then I did some things around the house. I gave it, you know, 30 minutes, did my morning routine. Then I put my makeup on, and I wiped that off a little bit, but it was clear, and then I put this on. And I just want to show you how it's not too opaque. It just gives you a good little bit of a milky, you know, it, I guess it, um, what am I trying to say? It softens your true lip color and puts a little bit, you know, of this on. I'm sure I could put more on now and it would be much lighter, but I kind of like the way it is. No liner or anything. Another thing I wanted to mention to you is this morning when I woke up, I had no thought of city lips. My lips felt plump. I felt it. As soon as I woke up, I was like, my lips felt plump. So there must be something in this that really does really bring that high, your moisture and the hyaluronic acid and everything up to your lip. So I am so thankful for this. So many of you said you already knew you loved this too and all the colors are so pretty. Another thing I got are the masks. I have not tried one of these but I will let you know because they are infused with their serum to hydrate and plump and so I will try those and let you know. And then I used these today from my Walmart Mature, get ready with me. I know, I don't really love the word mature, but we're gonna make mature sexy. <laughs> we're gonna be badass mature around here. And so I'm gonna think about it that way. I'm not gonna let that word get me down like menopause used to get me down. I'm not gonna let that bother me anymore. In that video, I used this eyeshadow palette and it was so good. I was thinking, oh my gosh, how can this be so good? And then I thought, well, maybe it was that good because I used it over those pencils, those jumbo pencils. Well, I used it today just over my Laura Mercier Buff Eye Basics, and still, I think it's beautiful. Beautiful. Love it. What a find. It's dreamland. This blush, gorgeous. I have it on today. I just think it is the softest prettiest peach blush. Now today it is raining and cloudy so my lighting might be a little bit off. Matter of fact, okay, so I tried to adjust it a little bit like the white balance so maybe you can see all the colors better, my lips better. I really want you to see that. Love those and today I am wearing one of my pairs of jeans that I got from Good American when I did that collaboration with Good American and I've got the jeans and the tank on and I wanted to tell you that today started yesterday and I believe it goes I'll put the dates down below but they are having 25% off and several of you have asked me you know I've been getting different jeans and stuff several of you have asked me which ones I like the best the good American jeans let me go ahead and stand up and show you my outfit okay so I'm going to take this off, but I do not have on a strapless bra because I knew that I was going to wear this blazer today. But so this is the tank. It is so soft and pretty and I love it. It is definitely worth it. And I love, you know, like when I'm wearing that, that that little bit of interest is there and I love the high neck. I love like the silkiness of the fabric and the length is good. It's not a lot to tuck in, and I feel like it's just a good, sleek tank top. Okay, these jeans, oh my goodness. Okay, where do I begin? They have the perfect amount of stretch. I love the waistband, how it goes in, and they're just the perfect amount of fittedness and comfortable. Like, I can wear these all day, and I do not feel like they're binding me or, you know, I've got stuff hanging out. 
and they're just wonderful. These and the Good Legs jeans. So we'll back up here. These are the ones that are the cropped flare. I have them on with my just my good old Zara clear shoes, and then I'm going to wear this Legeant's blazer, and. I think that's a really cute little outfit. And as you can see, I got a blowout yesterday. I want, I was just craving something different. And so I called Morgan and scheduled a blowout. And I asked her, I said, do you think this is going to mess it up? Like if I ever want to, you know, because I love wearing my hair natural. I mean, I probably like it a little bit more. But I like, you know, I like to switch things up. And she said, as long as I don't flat iron it or curl and iron it on 450, she said, especially flat iron, which I never go over 325, but she said that I should be fine. So, fingers crossed I can still, you know, rock the other way because I like it. You know, it's just a different look, but I like it too. Sheila Fajal earrings, I love this size. You guys know I love the favorite hoops, but I think there's something cool about this size. My Citrine Castle Ring. My nails are, boy, I've been talking so much, I'm about out of breath. My nails are Chanel pirate where's the nail she thought i was talking about her pirate one of my favorite reds and my toes are just about this color too and is that it i think that's it so don't forget about the 25 percent off don't forget about the city lips codes i will put the links down below again and don't forget to practice your confidence think about how silly i looked yesterday dancing and how Think about how you felt at, about me at that moment. Did it make you not like me because I couldn't dance? Did it make you think I had, you know, did it, did it make you like me less or did it make you like me more? Put down below what it made you think, what you thought about that because I didn't know how you guys would take that. I didn't know if it would be like ridiculous because I never want to come off arrogant, which is a totally different subject, but so tell me what you thought about that, and I will see you tomorrow. I've got lots of good stuff to show you on my Friday haul. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.